you've finished the first part of your imaging procedure classes and now you're going to start clinicals for the first time. You might have your bags ready, your books ready, you know your little handbook, you might be thinking yes I've got this and then you stop and you think but wait what what am I really to expect out there or what is expected of me well have no fear that's where I come in and today I'm gonna let you know what is expected of you in the clinical setting as a new student you don't have to go through your anatomy exams imaging assignments and clinical competencies alone subscribe to Active Ad Tech for helpful tutorials and blogs Let's make the journey from the classroom to the extra room much easier. If it's your first time seeing me or hearing from me, hello, my name is Donna from AxaRadTech.com and this is a blog with a medical professional in mind. Basically, I'm here to be that person that I wish I got to see on these platforms when I was first starting out. Let's get into our topic for today. In general, before I even start, for that particular practicum, you'll be given the generals and specifics on what is expected in terms of your competencies. For example, you might be doing upper extremities or you're focusing on skull work, which if you're now starting, it's not going to be skull work. Chances are it's upper extremities, lower extremities, chest and abdomen. Simple stuff and pelvis, right? After you know this, you'll be handed your attendance log sheets or your log book as well as your clinical diary or your clinical competency book. In your log book, of course, you'll be noting the site that you're rusted at, the time you're rusted for as well as the time you arrive and leave. And usually this log is signed out by the head radiographer, like the senior radiographer or the chief radiographer in general or even the clinical coordinator for that site. Um, also when it comes to the clinical competency book, this is the book that you'll be writing in all the things that you are competent in that the radiographer will sign up on. For example, you might have five knee x-rays that you need to do and once you complete them successfully with no like set of errors or anything, they will You'll write down the name, write down the, um, the order number or whatever the case is. So the radiographer on duty will sign it off for you and this basically says yes. He or she or they are confident in this particular procedure. Also you'll be given a special uniform that you need to wear. You will either have to get it sewn or they will sell it. Um, we had to get our sewn, the uniform was hideous and I think that goes across the board for a lot of schools, radiography uniforms. I don't know why we always have the ugliest ones. Mine in particular look like a chef's jacket with navy blue pants, like a white chef's jacket with like six buttons running down with a big flap and it was, it was hideous. I had to wear that for a few years well, I didn't enjoy the look. But it got me where I needed to be, so that was all that mattered. Um, if you don't wear uniforms in your university or college or school or whatever, they will be likely telling you that there's a specific scrub color or scrub type that you'll need to wear. And all these uniforms and scrub what you do is it helps identify you as a student on the clinical site. So when you actually reach the clinical site, the clinical coordinator or head radiographer or whoever will give you a tour of the imaging department. You'll meet the radiologists, the doctors, the nurses around. Um, maybe you might meet some escorts or patient attendants, whatever they call them at the hospital that you would be at. And you'll basically get to familiarize yourself with the department not only will they show you with any department, but they'll also show you places like ICU, the high dependency unit, HDU. You might get to learn where resource is, not might, you will learn where resource is, as well as other little areas within the department that makes it function the way it does. Um, this will help you, especially when it's time to go on portables, if you have to move around for yourself you know where you are. I do recommend checking out my blog post on what you should pack in your clinical bag, including your markers and all of that, right? So I'll link it in the description bar below and maybe I might do a video on that later on. But for now, check out the blog post so you'll know exactly what you need in your bag. So now, the question that you get a lot, workload. What to expect in a hospital? It's a lot, right? Sometimes, depending on where you work, like if it's a smaller place or a private clinic, you would have way less patients. I'm talking maybe 20 patients a day. And that's not much in like general, right? 
if it's really really small you might get closer to like 15 but it's really unlikely especially if you live in bigger cities or bigger areas chances are you might be seeing up to 100 patients a day but don't worry you won't be in it alone right and the next thing that you might be considering is your independence will they throw me out to the wolves and let me do everything do i have to fend for myself out there and the answer is no you don't have to worry about that when you're new yes you know the theory but they don't expect you to really go and do everything like if you know you're doing this 10 years now no so you would be given certain patients to do simpler cases they're not gonna expect an mva patient or somebody with multiple gunshot wounds bleeding all over the table and tell you go and do those x-rays go do that trauma series no they will take their time and introduce certain patients like certain cases to you so that you can familiarize yourself with the room how it works how everything goes and over time you'll get to do more in the beginning you actually don't do that much you more so look and familiarize yourself remember all the procedures that you would have learned in your textbook and now you're actually doing it you're no longer practicing on your, your classmates or your family members you're actually doing actual patients patients with feelings patients with problems patients who might be in pain patients who might be angry it's, it's a whole different scene when you're actually in the hospital doing x-rays doing working with patients right and it's, it's kind of expected to that even in the work setting in the clinical setting you'll be meeting many different types of personalities so it's just up to you to deal with that right as it may come so in addition to that that question or that fear or that worry of independence when you do start to do patients when you do start to get x-rays to do the radiographer will be looking at you looking at the way you do the procedure almost like if they're breathing down on your neck because they're literally behind you looking they may correct you once they see you doing anything well they should anyway correct you if they see you doing anything wrong or if they think that your centering is off a little bit they'll say okay what you think that you should do here in order to make sure that you get the entire pelvis i don't know or what you think um what sid do we use for this so they will ask you questions it's expected that they would ask you certain things so yes you need to know some things but they don't expect you to just run out and do it just like that right you'll be guided accordingly a lot of the times so newer students tend to become cassette carriers and this is basically where you're toting cassettes they carry for the radiographer, carry to process. You will learn about the processing of the images. Maybe, maybe working in direct digital where you don't have to be moving cassettes to and fro. It goes, it takes the image, it shows up automatically on the screen. It all depends on where you work at and you know the, the level of technology there. But in general, you don't have to worry it will be okay so finally i just want to close with saying that when you're new to the clinical site it will all happen gradually you will learn things gradually your your confidence will increase your comfortability will increase and over time things will come like second nature like oh a chest let me just go and do that quick like you're not gonna be thinking oh my gosh okay i need to use a 14 17 um let me get my lead shielding gonad shields um you won't be flustered you won't be like that you'll be like okay shielding this put that there expose blah good it'll be simple it'll be straightforward so don't worry over time things will progress that's it for this video i hope that it was helpful and i hope that it gave you a better insight on what to expect in your on your first day or just in general in the beginning of your clinical you know practicum experience so thank you so much for watching this video you will hear with me donna from axorazic.com and i'll see you all in the next one bye don't forget to subscribe and turn that post notification bell on so you'll always know when i post bye